welcome to our family ministry connecting people to God. At this time, we will be discussing about our lesson or Bible study guide. We will be studying our Bible using the Bible study guide. And I'd like to invite you to come to the memory text that we have, suggested memory text. This is found in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Okay, you can get your Bible in Deuteron and open it to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. It says here, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which he keepeth covenant mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. Can we memorize that? God is God. He is the faithful God, keeping His covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love Him and keep His commandments. Friends, God is God. He is faithful. He made covenant of love in leading His people to the right pathway. And maybe you'll be asking, what is the right pathway? It's a path of righteousness. It's a path of righteousness. That's why David declares in Psalm 23 verse 3, He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. So the right pathway is a path of righteousness. And because of his moral uprightness, God will never lead us astray. He will provide safe paths for our spiritual walk through life. And what are the safe paths that God will lead us? It's the paths of righteousness. Psalm 119. Let us open our Bible to Psalm 119. Okay. Psalm 119 verse 35. It says here, make me, make me to go in the path of thy commandments. So what are the safe paths of righteousness? I, this psalmist says, make me to go in the path of thy commandments. The paths that will lead us to a right doing. Paths of righteousness, according to Psalm 119 verse 35, it's the path of thy commandments. And we have also in Psalm 119, verse 172. It says, My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. All thy commandments are righteousness. God's law is safe, firm, through the trichorous swamp of human existence. So the center of our study in using our Bible study guide is I'd like you to, to, to visualize what we're going to discuss for today. It's talking about God's commandments and the part of the covenant that He made with the people of Israel. Now let us try to look at the very center thought of our study. God chose lineage of Abraham to have a covenant relationship. And you know, in every relationship or agreement, there are roles to follow. God's law was an integral part of the covenant. It is true covenant of grace and love. It is designed for our happiness and safety. He chose Israel to make to have covenant relationship. And the law is part, is an integral part of the covenant relationship. Maybe you'll be asking, friends, why did is God choose Israel? It's the election of Israel. What did Israel election means? Let us read Exodus 19, verse 6. Exodus 19, verse 6, it says that, And you will be my kingdom of praise, my holy nation, 
This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. This is now God speaking to Moses, telling that Israel is being elected to be his chosen people, to lead up the covenant relationship with him, and for the reason that they are the people of God, and you will be, and you will be my kingdom of praise, my holy nation. This is the message that you must give to the people of Israel. Moses speaking, a God speaking to Moses, and this is the message that Moses should tell his people. And again, I'd like to repeat the question, why God choose Israel? Is God playing favoritism? Ah, oh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. Okay, let us look at Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. It says, The Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of people. Take note that God did not choose Israel because they are more in number. In fact, they are few. It was not because they were deserving of high honor. They have no merit of their own. And you know the basic cause then for Israel's election lay in the mystery of God's love and grace. That's basic principle why God has chosen Israel. It is not because his, the lineage of Abraham, he is the favorite group of God. In fact, they are not worthy. They are pure in number according to Deuteronomy 7, 7. And again, I'd like to repeat the reason is a mystery of God's love and grace. Is because of his unconditional love. What did God choose Israel for? Isaiah 56 verse 7. They were chosen to be vehicle who would offer the world what they have been offered. And this I will bring to my holy mountain. Give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called the house for all nations. The house for all nations. The reason why God has chosen Israel. So that that Israel will be a blessing. Will lead on the spiritual, spiritual journey for all nations. To convey the message of that God wants to save everyone. So you notice here that. The very reason of the election of Israel. God has a purpose that through Israel that he could influence the world about the love of God, the love of God who is in heaven. God who is in heaven. God wanted everybody to be saved. It's not only the people of Israel. In fact, in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, it's talking about the coverage of the love of God that he wanted to, to save. Now, let us look at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. It says, my friends, but we do, we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while. Now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for whom? For Israel only? For everyone. Not that in the end portion of the verse of Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. Jesus Christ died for Everyone, whatever your tribe, whatever your status and, condi and condition in society, Jesus Christ died for everyone. The reason why Israel was chosen and the election of Israel to, for, by God, by having covenant relationship, 
is not only for Israel, that Israel will just confine the blessing to them, but it is to showcase to the world of the God that cares, the God that love. So reasons for election, it is to proclaim the message of redemption to the world. And the purpose of Israel's election was not to turn the Hebrew nation into some exclusive club hoarding the promise of salvation and redemption for themselves. Israel was supposed to be the vehicle for which his redemption would be known throughout the world. And let us now come to our practical application of this concept. Friends, when God bless us, are you blessed by God? Blessings may come to any form. To those who are financially blessed by God, the reason of the blessing is not only for your selfish use. If you are blessed by talents, it's not only to confine it to yourself. The same as God has elected Israel, not only to confine that blessing and the covenant relationship to themselves, but they could showcase and influence people for the Lord. So the same with us. When God bless us, it is not only for ourselves, but for others. So I'd like to repeat, you are blessed financially, don't use it selfishly. That blessing will be given to your family and share it to others. When you are blessed with talents, don't confine it to yourself. You should use it to influence others. You should showcase it, what it means to have connection with God. And as a corporate church, now we Seventh-day Adventists, we like to view ourselves as the counterpart of Israel, called by the Lord, not to be the only ones redeemed, but to proclaim the message of redemption to the world. Take note of this, the reason why God called us, why God uh, selected us as your members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You know, we are very special, we are the remnant church. It is not only that we are only that will be saved, but as a church, we should tell the word of the God of love, especially in the context of the three angels' messages. We have something to say that no one else is saying. Try to evaluate your message. Compare it with others. We have something to say that others that no one else is saying and that's something that God has given to us it is to showcase what it means to obey the Lord it is to showcase what it means to have connection with the living God the Hebrews the lineage of Abraham elected by God to covenant relationship Seventh-day Adventist Christians elected you to have covenant relationship an obedience to the law is the integral part and very basic in that covenant relationship. It is very basic. In fact, it is known to be so basic to the covenant that it is actually that relationship, covenant relationship, an agreement with God, their ties that bind is obedience to the law. Uh, the law is an integral part of the covenant. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13, Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13, it says, sir, my friends, that, okay, and he declared unto you his covenant which he commanded you to perform. Even ten commandments he wrote them and upon two tables of stones. Wow! Deuteronomy chapter 4, 13. This is a tie that bind with the agreement. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform. Even ten commandments, he wrote them upon the two tables of stone. He wrote them upon the two tables of stone. 
When you think about what Cardinal is, the concept of law is an integral part. Part really it makes sense. If we understand the Cardinal as among other things, a relationship, then some sort of roles and boundaries need to be drawn. Take for example the covenant relationship in marriage. What do you think? How long would marriage or friendship or business partner last if there were no boundaries or no roles? In fact, during the ceremony of marriage, the roles is being outlined. Now you make a commitment and there is a there is role to follow that you confine yourself only to your partner. If you break that role, then your relationship will be in danger. So with the covenant relationship and obedience to the law, actually they are being bounded. It is inseparable. God made a relationship because of his love. He initiated to have that relation, covenant relationship with his people because of his love, because of his grace. But to impact that agreement, we should submit ourselves and we should obey. So you accept the covenant of love when you obey. Psalm 78 verse 10, they did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. That's so unfortunate with the experience of the chosen people. They refused to believe. They claimed to be the people of God, but they did not keep God's covenant. And the not keeping God's covenant is the refusal to live by His law. Psalm 25 verse 10. All the ways the Lord, all the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful toward those who keep the demands of his covenant. Psalm 103 verse 18, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. So it is always connected, that agreement, that covenant relationship, part of that, the integral part is obedience to the law. Think of someone you have close relationship with. Now imagine what would happen to that relationship if you didn't feel bound for any roles, norms, or laws, but believe you had total freedom to do whatever you wanted. Do you think that relationship would last? Our covenant law is recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Covenant law, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And very specifically, it is being outlined in the Ten Commandments what it means to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And many people are actually, they, are, they don't like the law because they view it as a restrictions and having no freedom. And I'd like to ask you, what are your first thoughts when you think of law? Restrictions, punishment, or maybe in some other perspective, it should be viewed as a manifestation of love. Perhaps do you think of order, harmony, of stability without that law, which is the covenant of love and the integral part of the agreement, then there's no stability and no harmony, and there's no order. So I would like to say that God has given us and reminded us that for us to prosper and to have happy journey with Him, 
we should obey and he outlined the behavior and the things that we should follow recorded in the Ten Commandments. And maybe you'll be asking why God included obedience to this covenant. Deuteronomy chapter 10, 10 verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 13. Okay, shall we open our Bible again? Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 13. It says, To keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Why God included obedience? It is for my own good. It is for your own good. I could just remember my parents, they have so many roles that they, all, they always outline for us as children. And you know, overall, it is for our own good. They, not, they will not make any roles to harm you. It is for our own good. That's why in any relationship, obedience is very crucial obedience is part of that covenant relationship okay law within the covenant was to provide guidelines to the new life of the human covenant partner take note this when you have relationship with jesus christ you have relationship with god it does not mean that you are free to do anything and there are some group who promote anyway we are saved by grace by faith we are not saved by works and some people are aller allergic to works but there is a place of work that is not to gain salvation but there is a role for works and the commandments and obedience of the ten commandments that could play in that relationship is the condition of god to obey the law for our own good remains the same as some people are telling, anyway, this is now outdated. The Ten Commandments is not now. We are now in the modern time. It is now being out, it is outdated. When Jesus Christ came, He changed it. He changed it. And let us try to look at Matthew 5.17. Jesus Christ speaking. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill it. Is God changing the principle? Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. I, the Lord, do not change. So, you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Because I, the Lord, does not change. And we have also in the New Testament, James 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadow. Description of God who does not change. When he established that principle, it is there because he is a God who does not change. He did not come to destroy the law, but fulfill it. So the condition of God to obey the law for our own good remains the same. God's law, I'd like to quote uh, from our study guide, page 259. This is in the Wednesday discussion. God's law is an oral or written expression of His will because it is a transcript of his character its presence in the covenant assures us of the permanence and dependability of god although we may not always be able to discern the outworking of his providence we know that god is a trustworthy god his universe is under the unvarying moral and physical laws it is this fact that gives us true freedom and security. So the law of God, which is the integral part of the covenant, the covenant law is there, is the integral part of that relationship because he is a God who wanted to have an order. God's law cannot save a person from sin, yes. And why did he make it a part of the covenant 
You know, God's law is not designed to save. It is designed to guide. There is a very important role that the law is playing. And we don't like. Some people are allergic to that because the law, they are thinking that the law, you have to keep the law in order to be saved. No, we are saved. And the role of the law is to guide us. It's, again, I'd like to repeat, role of the law is not to save, but it is it has a very important role to play in our relationship with God. A relationship requires agreement and have harmony, and the law of God outlined that. So what is the covenant? Ah, Exodus 19.5, Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be treasure possession, although the whole earth is mine. And Genesis 26 verse 4, I will make your descendants numerous as the stars of the sky, will give you all these lands, and through your offspring all nations on the earth will be blessed. That's the agreement that the covenant relationship and the integral part in order that the covenant will be fulfilled is obedience to the law. Exodus 19.5 and Exodus 9 okay, says, Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth. It is very clear. The covenant law is clear. I, I, if you will obey, that's the conditional aspect of the covenant. It is undeniable though bestowed by grace. But the gift to them, it is the gift of God. The covenant promises were not unconditional. It is by choice that you accept that. The people could reject the gift, deny the grace, and turn away from the promises. The covenant as with salvation never negates free will. The Lord does not force people into a saving relationship with Him. It's your choice. Are you obeying the covenant law so that God will bless us? No. Obedience to the law is not a means of earning the covenant blessing, but as an outward manifestation of having received the covenant blessings. Israel should obey not in order to earn the promises, but that the promises could be fulfilled in her. Her obedience was not an expression of what it is like to be blessed by the Lord. Obedience does not earn the blessings in that God is obligated to bring them. Obedience instead creates an environment where the blessing of faith, where the blessing of faith can be manifest. This is quoted from Thursday discussion in the Bible study guide. Friends, if you obey, these blessings can result because obedience opens the way for me to be able to bring the blessings upon you. Meaning that you are not out of coverage area to the blessing of the Lord when you obey. When you disobey, you are making yourself out of the coverage, out of the reach of God's blessing because that's the integral part of that relationship. And very important in our obedience, love and trust Him was given the promise. There must first be love in the heart before a person can, in the strength and by the grace of Christ, begin to observe the precepts of God's law. That's the very center of what Paul is telling. In fact, in Romans 8, 3 and 4, it is emphasizing about relationship. This is crucial. And the fruit of that relationship is your willingness because of your willingness to obey, because of your love, you are willing to obey because you know that the God who tells you to follow this is God who can be trusted. He is a love, loving God. I'd like to quote as a whole to the ISDA Bible Commentary, Volume 5, page 484. Let us read that. There must first be love in the heart before a person can, in the strength and by the grace of Christ, begin to observe the precepts of God's law. Obedience without love is impossible as it is worthless. But where love is present, a person 
will automatically set out to order his life in harmony with the will of God as expressed in his commandments. So that's now the study that we have. Overall, our study is picturing of God who can be trusted. Overall, our study is picturing that God tried to reach out not only for a certain group of people, but throughout the world. God loves everybody and He tried to select a group to showcase of His love. I hope that we will not fail Him. If we claim to be in the lineage of Abraham by, by virtue of our acceptance with Jesus Christ, then I hope that we will be a showcase to the world and to all nations. God made that covenant relationship to His people. He will prosper them and save them by His grace, and we accept that promise by faith. God's law was an integral part of the covenant, yet it is, it was a true covenant of grace. Grace, however, never nullifies the need for the law as some people are telling that you don't need to obey the law because you are saved by grace. The more that we are saved by grace that we try to integrate our obedience not to earn that grace but as a part of our connection with God, our love relationship with God. On the contrary, law is means by which grace is manifested and expressed in the lives of those who receive grace. In conclusion, the good news, God loves all people. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And that's a good news. God loves you. God loves everyone. Whatever, whatever your tribe or your status in community, God loves you. He chose Israel in the lineage of Abraham and also spiritual lineage of Abraham to showcase so that as many as will choose to have that relationship with God will be saved in His kingdom. The Ten Commandments are the reflection of God's concern and love. Praise the Lord. Oh, God has given those, those roles because to safeguard us to make us happy, to help us live in peace. The instruction of God is the manifestation of His love. We are saved by grace alone, but the covenant law tells us to accept His offer of prosperity and salvation by faith reflected in the obedience of instruction because that is the integral part of our relationship with Him. I hope that you make a decision to have, to accept that offer of love. 